the topic is two dimensional quality i'll be talking to you about basic contribution of dr noria kikano to this field of two dimensional quality and also the developments which metric research team has carried out let us begin with some background traditionally quality has been a single dimensional phenomena you keep on improving quality on a quality parameter and it is presumed that more you deliver better it is typically you measure quality in production by less number of defects you produce so if you are producing one defect per 100 you have poor quality if you improve production your defects may go down to one defect per 1000 you have improved it may improve to one defect per million so it's a unidimensional measure of quality this is good as far as it goes but in modern times we are not delivering a defective product to the customer we are delivering a good product to him then how do we measure quality obviously the purpose of measuring quality is whether it will satisfy a customer delight a customer be loyalty in customer's mind so now the measurement of quality is through the perception of the customer dr nuria kikano formalized this into the two dimensional quality theory instead of measuring quality against a uniform parameter he said quality must be measured as a relationship between two dimensions one is your performance on a quality attribute and the other dimension is the impact it achieves on delight dissatisfaction state in customer's mind so now the quality becomes a relationship between these two dimensions and that's why it is called two dimensional quality dr nariya ku kano further proposed that there are different kind of relationships in this two dimensional space of performance versus satisfaction there are attributes of quality where if you perform badly the customer is dissatisfied he doesn't like it he expects certain minimum performance but moment you cross that threshold higher performance does not give more satisfaction does not give him more delight he then forgets about that attribute he has got satisfactory performance typically look at scratch free surface of a new car what he expects is if i look at the car i should not notice a scratch even when i go and i am cleaning the car with my own hands i should not notice a scratch i am happy if i notice a scratch i am dissatisfied but if you tell me that even under 10x microscope no scratch is visible i am not bothered if you tell me even under electron microscope no scratch is visible i am not bothered you and me as customers want a scratch free car that is a scratch which will not be noticed by you and me end of the matter this is must be quality you don't perform it up to the level customer is dissatisfied you perform more and more customer is not delighted then of course there are parameters where more you perform customer is more happy typically the mileage that your car delivers if a car delivers 10 kilometers per liter you are not so happy perhaps dissatisfied if it delivers 15 kilometers per liter you are satisfied if it delivers 30 kilometers per liter you may be delighted this is a conventional linear attribute there is a third kind of quality attribute where unexpectedly good delivery either an something which was not expected at all or more of what was expected can really cause delight 
Let me give you a recent experience I had. I went to a bookstore and I remember my school days. I said, let me read those books again. So I was looking for Perry Mason, you know, written by Earl Starley Gardner, the famous Perry Mason lawyer, detective. I went to the bookshelf. I found three, four Perry Masons. I was glancing through them. I was looking at the back cover. An attendant came and said, sir, can I help you? I said, yes, I am looking for Perry Mason, but I am worried I will buy the book which I already read. He said, don't worry, sir, just come with me. We have a 100% collection of Perry Mason and we also have a beautiful classification system. He took me to his computer. He said, look, sir, all the Perry Mason books are listed by year of publication. We have a further facility. You know, these Perry Mason books are relaunched with new titles. So you think the book is new, but it is same as old title. That is also classified. And you pick up a book. I'll get you each and every Perry Mason book that you want. I was delighted. I never expected this to happen. Here, if you had not performed, if you had said, okay, these are the Perry Mason books on the shelf, have your choice, I would not have been dissatisfied. That is what I expected. His additional service delighted me. Most of the value added services are this kind of delight generating attributes. So we have a two dimensional quality place, space in which there must be attributes. There are continuous attributes, delight attributes. On must be attributes, you must cross the must be threshold and stop. On delight attribute, you must cross the delight threshold and be, do a bit more so that the customers are loyal. On continuous attributes, more you deliver the merrier. Now, this is the major insight for having a cost effective quality improvement program which will generate customer loyalty. Dr. Noriaki Kano developed this theory to develop product on the shop floor. Metric advanced this theory to develop product so that customer loyalty is built in the marketplace. There are some additional aspects which we must note. This what is must be, what is delight changes from customer to customer. For an old customer like me who has once read a lot of Perry Mason, having a complete listing and classification of Perry Mason books is a delight attribute. For a youngster who is going to the store first time to buy Perry Mason, having 10-12 Perry Mason books is a must be attribute, more will not delight him. He has to read his first two books to decide whether he wants to read more. So according to the class of customers, same attribute may become must be, may become delight attribute. Over time, a must delight attribute becomes a must be attribute. Typically, in your mobile phone, that you are able to see, read your email was a delight attribute, say four years back. Today, all of us think it is a must be attribute. We have to also realize, therefore, that when we make this classification and use it for business decision making, we have to continuously update our understanding of what is delight, what is must be, in context of the market segments, in context of the time in which we are operating. But we do that, it gives us great advantage in winning customer loyalty. Thank you.